And I'm going to just sharpen these lines a little bit just with the edge of my metal rib. Ribbing the outside and then taking a moment to rib the inside. And also make sure you're happy with the quality of the top rim. Remember that the wheel is a tool to generate round shapes, but you can always alter. So I'm just going to alter just this top section, modifying it from the round. Okay. Now I'm going to let both of these sections dry into the leather hard state, which would be between one and three hours. Here I have two sections that are both leather hard. And again, leather hard is partially dry and it hasn't started changing color yet. And you'll see that this is the real benefit of leaving the bottom section attached to the wheel, is that it makes it very easy to attach the two sections in perfect alignment. You know, if this bottom section was not on the wheel, it'd be very easy. If you didn't take the time to step away from the pot, you could be a little bit cockeyed, a little bit at an angle, and if you were just sitting right in front of your piece and you, you, know, you didn't step away from it, you wouldn't really notice. Also take a moment to inspect the bottom edge of this top piece. And if it's a little thicker, um, usually it's pretty typical to have a little extra thickness down here. Just take, some, take a few minutes just to remove it with your fettling knife so that you have an even quarter inch wall thickness. And then slip and score. Top edge of your bottom piece, and bottom edge of your topper. Press and wiggle to secure the attachment, working the two pieces together. And you see at this point I can just give the wheel a spin and to know instantly if I'm on center. If I have a gap between these two sections, I can simply slip and score the joint and press on a small coil. So I have a small coil of wet clay that I'm just going to fill in the gap. And our goal here is to make our stacked faces seamless. 
So I'm just going to come in with a wet rib and just finesse this joint. Nobody ever needs to know that your vase was made in multiple sections. So we're going to smooth the seam on the outside and on the inside. If the vase is too small to fit your hand inside, you can use a wet tool handle or a dowel to smooth this inside seam. If you're not happy with the change of direction, feel free to come in with your trimming tool. And just give it a little more definition. Remember to allow your vase to dry slowly so that both parts can homogenize or um, become the same level of dryness. You wouldn't want it to crack at the seams. So I would lightly cover your vase with plastic for a day or two before you leave it uncovered.